food of the world, particularly popular in Asia and Africa. Now scientists have developed a new type of the grain, which can grow in nutrient-poor soils. The new rice strain could help farmers boost crop yields by as much as 20% from land low on nutrients. A gene found in wild Indian rice plants has been crossbred with the common grain varieties to enhance rice plants to grow and absorb more nutrients from the soil. The new strain of rice is the work of scientists in the Philippines. We're joined now from Manila by Sigurd Dewar of the International Rice Research Institute. First of all, just tell us just how much hello, of, hello. of a breakthrough this is for, for rice growing and consumption. Well, I think uh, with, with our work, we are addressing a global problem, and that is that uh, about 50% of the cropland is uh, low in, in plant-available phosphorus. And with our discovery, um, the gene that we discovered that enables plants to uh, grow a larger root system and takes up more phosphorus, I think this will be having a significant impact in, in those, uh, under those uh, phosphorus-deficient conditions. So in other words, it will make it easier, less costly to produce rice, and therefore there could be a higher output? Well, you know, in, in Southeast Asia, there was 60% of the rice, the rainfed rice being grown on problem soils. Those regions are affected by a multitude of uh, stresses, including phosphorus deficiency. So if we can enhance yield in those regions by, let's say, 10 to 50%, it depends, but we would... We feel the comforter was saying about 20% on average. This will have a major impact on the food security in those regions because on those problem soils, you know, the yield is very low and the farmers are also usually very poor. And how long does it take normally from this kind of a, of a scientific development that you have seen to actually getting it to farmers in the countries where it matters? Well, it takes far too long, we think. Um, this project particularly, the first uh, discovery was done in the late 90s, and we're only now close to getting it into farmer's fields. So we expect within the next three to five years um, to get the first varieties out there. But we are getting better at doing the breeding because we are now combining conventional breeding with molecular market technology. So with using those modern tools, we can speed up the breeding process quite a bit because we can substitute screenings in the field with uh, lab analy analysis in the laboratory. So this will save us a lot of time and we get the varieties out faster to the farmers that really need it. Well, we hope you do. Sigurd, congratulations on, on the discovery and thank you for joining us.